In this lesson, we're going to go over another possible accounting interview question in investment banking interviews, which is what happens when your deferred tax liability changes or your deferred income tax total changes. Now, I would say that this one is not a particularly common interview question. It is more advanced, it's certainly a more advanced topic. And so I would not necessarily expect it in all entry level interviews. That said, I have gotten some requests for this and understanding how this stuff works and how these items actually work is important for understanding merger models and elements of LBO models later on as well. So first off, recall what the definition of a deferred income tax is. So deferred income tax, all that means is we record tax number, but don't pay it out in cash. So on the income statement here, for this company, we have 200 for our income tax provision, but we don't actually know what we're paying out in cash. Remember that the income statement, we have a lot of items on here that do not actually correspond to what's happening in cash terms. So depreciation, stock-based comp, these impairments, write-downs, for example, the income statement's not actually reflecting what's happening in cash terms to this company. And deferred income taxes operate much the same way. On the income statement, we're always going to record some type of standard tax provision based on a 30 or 35% or 40% rate. But in reality, what we pay in cash, it could be a lot different. Now, there are many reasons for this. Sometimes in acquisitions, when you acquire a company, you can get a tax break. Sometimes you have net operating losses and you can reduce how much you're actually paying in cash taxes. And there are all sorts of other accounting rules that govern how this actually works. The details of those are not important for the purpose of this interview question. We're going to be getting into those later in this course. For the interview question, I'm just going to show you very briefly what happens when your deferred income tax total actually changes here. So let's go over to the interview questions here. I'm going to enter 100 for deferred income taxes changes by. So let's start with the income statement again. So there are actually no changes to the income statement here. Now be very careful here. This one's a little counterintuitive because for depreciation, for stock-based compensation, for the impairments or write-downs, you would see them reflected on the income statement. But for the deferred income taxes, you actually do not see this show up on the income statement. So that is a little counterintuitive, but those are just the accounting rules for this particular item. Instead, what happens is on the cash flow statement, so nothing changes at the top except the deferred income taxes here. This shows up as a cash add back, a non-cash item that we're adding back here. So everything else is the same, but we have deferred income taxes serving as an add back on our cash flow statement. So cash flow from operations is up by 100, and then no other changes on investing or financing activity. So at the bottom, our cash number here is up by 100. The reason we're adding this back is because again, this represents taxes that we're not actually paying out in cash, that we're deferring to a future period here. So moving over to the balance sheet, what happens is that our cash number here is up by 100, which we know from the cash list statement that we just went through. No other changes on the asset side, so total assets are up by 100 here. And then on the liabilities and shareholders equity side, what happens here is that our deferred tax liability goes up by 100. This is a new item that I've created. What a deferred tax liability means is that you have to catch up and pay more taxes in the future. A deferred tax asset, by contrast, means that you get a refund and you pay less tax in the future. Deferred tax asset shows up under assets. Deferred tax liability shows up under liabilities. They are basically the same thing, except the way you work with them in accounting terms is the opposite. So another way we could actually show this transaction is we could actually have a deferred tax asset on the asset side and we could have the deferred tax asset going down to balance this change in cash or we could have our deferred tax liability here going up to balance it they're both equivalent because if you think about it in accounting terms cash is always going to go up and you need something else to balance it so they're basically the same thing it's just a personal preference which one you choose companies do it differently depending on their accountants and their auditors I prefer to list everything in deferred tax liabilities here to consolidate it. So that's what we're doing in this case. But that is basically what happens. The balance sheet balances because the deferred tax liabilities are up by 100. So liabilities and shareholders equity are up by 100. Cash is up by 100. So assets are up by 100 and everything balances right here. So that is how you deal with deferred income taxes and deferred tax assets and liabilities in accounting terms when you get this question in interviews. Again, certainly not a very common question, 
but still something that's good to be familiar with because later on this concept will come up when you get into more advanced merger and LBO models and you will see it quite often in companies' filings and in financial statements as well. So it's good to get acquainted with it. The most tricky and counterintuitive thing here is that it never shows up on the income statement itself. The income statement only reflects what you're paying in taxes according to the standard tax rate. And you later adjust it on the cash flow statement depending on what you've actually paid out in cash. So that's the most counterintuitive point here. That's what you have to remember. If you get that down, then the rest of this should be pretty straightforward.